I believe that our lives have already been transformed. And I want you to know that every single session will bring you something very, very fresh. When people want to give, do you a favor, they give you a physical gift like a pen or something. But when God wants to do a favor to a people, he gives them the gifts of men. He gave gifts of men. So one of the best things God can do for you is to give you the right men in your life. The gift of men. He gave gifts unto men. Some apostles and prophets and so on. And um, yesterday we heard from one of such gifts and today still he's here. He's the epitome of simplicity and humility. An epitome of an embodiment of multifaceted grace and we are glad to have him in our midst again i'm sure we'll be able to play the electronic i want you to see the clip of the of the perez dome do you have a, any clip with you in the ict media otherwise you, you you get set against this evening where we'll have um, the midweek service people before he comes you yeah, bishop sorry, charles Ajina sorry of that yesterday Release me from curses to blessings. Release me. He preached from that yesterday. Fasting and prayer. Releasing God's explosive power. He's an embodiment of that. From interacting with him all these years, I know. The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. One of the best things that can happen to you is the light you find. It changes your life. Savage wolves building strong character, hunting savage wolves, building strong character series is here. And then the Joseph paradigm leadership, the excellent boss and subordinate. This will be very, very good for leadership and all the titles that he has brought in here. They are available at the stand. There is a book stand. Um, Sylvester. By the welfare stand, on the right hand side, by the home church stand, at the glory gate, the, the stand is there. Take advantage of it, and I believe that your, your life will never be the same. It's not possible for a person to preach everything in one service, but you can get his wisdom from the stories he has told and the things he has shared in his materials. You will never remain the same. Anybody ready this morning for another wave of blessing? From God's apostle and prophet and evangelist. Evangelist, restless evangelist, restless. Now, I told this story before. One day, I watched a, a tape of his. He was doing um, a crusade, I think, um, in the northern part of Ghana or so. And I saw the ease with which the deaf and dumb people were hearing. And it was very, very drastic. And I left, I, after watching that clip, I went to a meeting in Otupo. This will be like 15 years ago. And I said, every deaf person here, come. Every of you. They came old, young, all manner, lined up. All of them. 100%. None went out deaf. Every single one. The things you hear, the things you see, they sharpen your life. And today is a new day. Stand up on your feet as to receive the ministry of God's servant, Bishop Charles Ajin Asari. All the way from Perez Chapel in Accra, Ghana. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you step Bishop forward. Bishop Charles Ajina Sari is an apostle to the nations, a missionary statesman, televangelist, pastor, author, and entrepreneur. As an evangelist, he has held numerous healing and miracle gospel campaigns throughout Ghana and in over 90 nations of the world including the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, India, Nigeria, Tanzania, Ivory Coast, and many others. Through these Ijinasari World Evangelism Outreaches, he also provides humanitarian aid to thousands of needy people in the form of medical care, education, and feeding. He is the founder and presiding bishop of the Paris Chapel International, an organization with hundreds of branches in Ghana, Europe, 
North America, Asia, and Francophone Africa. He also oversees a network of hundreds of independent churches. The Paris Dome, a 14,000-seater church auditorium, is his local church and has been described by former president John Mahama as one of the seven wonders of Ghana. Additionally, Bishop Ajina Sari is the founder and CEO of Precious Television, a Christian television channel that broadcasts to millions of households in both Ghana and Africa. A televangelist, his messages are also aired on many radio and TV channels in Ghana and abroad. He is a prolific author who has published over 76 books. Most Reverend Dr. Charles Ajinosari is a doctor of sacred studies and practical theology and is the chancellor of Perez University College. As a statesman, he has sat in council with and prayed for several presidents and heads of state in Africa and has received national and international recognition. In 2007, Ajina Sari received a national award, the member of the Order of the Volta, MV, by the former president of Ghana, John Kufo, for his outstanding achievements in championing African excellence as a religious leader. He has been married to the co-founder of his church, Reverend Mrs. Vivian Ajina Sari, for over 36 years, and they are blessed with three biological adult children, an adopted daughter, and four grandchildren. Dunamis, make welcome Bishop Charles Ajinasari. Offering given to Jesus. Give it to Jesus, give it to Jesus. You can do it better than that. You can do it better than that. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Will you turn to somebody and tell the person your life will never be the same? Amen. Will you please take your seat in the presence of the Lord? It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And I was so blessed by the teaching of Dr. Paul. Amen. Oh, if you want to clap, please do it well. He said some of the things that people don't preach anymore. Dying to the self. Humbling yourself. He said a lot of powerful things. Put your hands together again for him. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Our spirits have been fed this morning. We give him praise. We give God thanks. Amen. When he, I got a theme of the convention, the exceeding abundant grace, <laughs> I went to God in prayer. And God said to me, he said, Charles, I don't want you to just go and just be teaching on grace. I want you to go and show them that by my exceeding what my exceeding grace or my up, exceeding abundant grace in a man with a miracle ministry can do. Amen? Oh, you, that, that's a good place to put your hands together. So I'm not just here to teach on grace. Many of the other speakers will do that very well, but I'm here to just demonstrate and show what the exceeding abundant grace of God in a man's life it's like amen I'm going to show you a video now if my people are ready can you give me the hunchback at the independent square the hunchback at the independent square Elvis, are you in touch with them? This individual was born with a hunter. Hunchback. Hunchback. Huh? He I'm was a Listen, listen, listen to this. The boy was born with a hunchback. Yeah. Come here. I'm afraid you don't know what a fool I want to cheat. That's a okay. Now a fool on a cheap one at the wall. 
And he was a man with the hunchback. But if you are Oh, five years. Five years. And the hunt has disappeared. Ah! Yeah. Look at him. Look at it. Look at it. Aira. Mama, Nan, Nan, Kasi, at the same. It was like that. Mama said it was big like that. Give the Lord a hit. Going. Give the Lord a hit. Oh. There is another one here. Yeah? No, no, no. Let me finish with this one. If you have a young son. Masa. You're frozen. Coffee pasta. Coffee pasta. Father, thank you for touching coffee pasta. Thank you for doing this miracle in their life and in his life. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a mighty God. Mama Wenyaji. 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 Jesus name I pray. Amen. I receive it. Ah, my God is good. Oh. My God is good. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to show. Yes, if you want to clap, do it well. I'm going to show you another one in Tanzania. Another one in Tanzania. So, if uh, you are ready for me, let's go to Tanzania. In Jesus' name, 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 come in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in mama in Jesus name mama go in let's go in Jesus name in let's go let's go in Jesus name in strength is coming go in Jesus name 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 in in Jesus name come in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name come in Jesus name come in Jesus name come in Jesus name come in Jesus name let's go back here Let's go. In Jesus' name. Let's go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a mighty clap of In Jesus' name. Come. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Come. In Jesus' name. Come. In the Lord a mighty clap of praise. This was that the, is that your wife? This was the infirm section of the meeting. Carrying all these people, they literally carried them on beds to the meeting. Carried to this place. Do you believe when I pray that you can walk on your own? Do you believe that? When I pray that you can walk on your own. When I pray for you, migraine will go, your sickness will go. Jesus stood over Peter's wife's mother who had malaria. He rebuked the malaria. She got up and fixed food for them. Unaamini kwamba nikikuombea utapata afya na unaweza kutembea mwenyewe. Kwa sababu hata Yesu alimuombea mama yake Petro ambaye alikuwa na malaria na akapata afya akaendelea shughuli zake. Unaamini? Yeah. 
Jesus prayed for Peter's wife, mother. He got up and fixed food for them. Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. you are, she had malaria. You also have malaria. You are going to be healed. Okay? Yes, so I'm going to pray for Peter's wife, mother. He got up and fixed food for them. Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. You are going to be healed. Okay? Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. You are going to be healed. Okay? Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. You are going to be healed. Okay? Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. You are going to be healed. Okay? Yes, so I'm going to pray for you. Come on, amen, Simon dear. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Touch this dear lady. Good to be you. Make her every way to home. Mfanye kuwa mzima tena. Satan break loose your hold on her. Kwa jina la Yesu. Ah, simama tena. Say simama tena. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Come. Say. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Peter's wife's mother was healed of the malaria and started serving. Yes, walk with me. 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 Lift up your legs. Walk with me. Lift up your legs. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. When you look at what has happened here, you see the multiplication of grace of the anointing on Bishop Oedipo. When you look at the prosperity anointing in Dr. Paul's life, you see the multiplication of grace. In 1998, I remember when Dr. Paul, I had spoken for Bishop Oedipo, I was going, he jumped into my car and said, I like this anointing. That is violent faith. <laughs> Amen. He said, I like this anointing. A few days ago, somebody was telling me, Pastor Ibiome said, when it comes to his crusades and miracle ministry, he took that grace from me. And as I sat yesterday and I saw the crusades, I said, this is my grace. But yes, if you want to clap, do it well. But when I was praying for this conference, the Lord said to me, there is a certain level of the miracle healing ministry that you haven't entered yet. And that is, and that is why I came. And tonight, we are going to have an impartation service. And I'm going to pray for you for that level. That is the level where you go into nations. And the nation is shaken literally. Oh, you didn't hear that. God has been using you tremendously. But the Lord said to me, He said, He, he said to me, Charles, he's, he's, he's waiting for it. He's waiting for that level of grace. Now, I've been to nations where I go into the nation and even the political atmosphere of the nation will change. Governments will change in nations. And there is a certain level of the miracle working power or crusade anointing that takes you to nations and things turn around. And that is the level, Dr. Paul, you are entering into. Amen. And you see, in this life, you can only give what you have. <laughs> you can give what you have. You, you can't give what you don't have. And Paul, Paul said to the church in Rome, he said, I am sure. That when I come to you, I will come with the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. I mean, there are times I see the awesome crusades Dr. Paul is holding. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I revere God for the great things he's doing with you. I, re, I revere God for the great things he's doing with you. Amen, Dr. Paul. I give the Lord praise for his life. And tonight, we are going to have an impartation service. And as we have the impartation service, if you want it, I'm going to be praying that for you. But God told me to do that. 
I haven't prayed that for anybody since I began ministry because there are stages of ministry. God has not asked me to do that. You know, at a certain time, God asked Moses to lay hands on. And I've prayed for Dr. Paul severally, you know, in his church, multiple times, you know, on the platform, etc. So it's not the first time I'm going to be doing that if he wants it. Uh, you know, but you've got to want it, even though God said he wants it. But there is a certain level of the miracle healing anointing where you go to... I remember we went to Sierra Leone with Bishop Takia Boy, and at that time, Charles Taylor had been arrested. And when Charles Taylor was arrested, they brought him to Sierra Leone. And the whole nation of Sierra Leone was afraid because... The, through Charles Taylor, you know, people's hands were cut, etc. And so the, the president sent the chief of defense staff, the army boss, to come to me and say that, Bishop, we want you to pray for Sierra Leone. The whole nation is under stress. We prayed for Sierra Leone, used the minister of defense as a point of contact. And when we did, that day, the United Nations held an emergency meeting and said they were taking Charles Taylor out of Sierra Leone. Oh, that's a good place to put your hands together. Amen. And so tonight, that's what, you know, we'll get into an impartation service. We'll pray for an impartation for people who want to experience a new level of ministry, what I carry, you know, to take it to the nations of the world. Uh, by the grace of God, I've preached the gospel in 91 nations of the world. 91 nations of the world. And at this season when Dunamis is celebrating 25 years, God wants to take this anointing, this, this, this grace, this grace, this grace that is upon me. Time will not permit me to tell you how this grace came upon my life but in an audible voice i heard the holy spirit say to me my boy charles i give unto you power over demons and principalities heal the sick raise the dead preach the kingdom and since then in the 91 nations of the world in fact there are some of the nations i went to i didn't even have money for much publicity but the nation shook under the miracle hand of God that is the grace I'm talking about that is the level God is dr. Paul has been blessed he has money he has personnel he has everything God wants to add this one and it's gonna be awesome dr. Paul the next years ahead of you are years that people will be amazed at what God is going to do in your crusade ministry it, 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 it's gonna be it's gonna be explosive People, you, you go to nations and presidents will come to the crusades and leaders and all kinds of people will come and, you know, you, you go to a nation and when you go to the nation, it's not just salvation of souls, but the principality that rules the community is taken care of, its power is broken and the thrones in the place are made subject to the name of Jesus. That is the level which you are getting into, Dr. Paul. That is the level. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. I remember in our Meduguri crusade, after, after, after we had been to Meduguri, uh, 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 um, the leaders in Meduguri said we should leave the platform there for two weeks. And we left the platform. And people will come from the villages and touch the platform. And as they touch the platform, the power of God will touch them and set them free. I'm going to talk on some of the things or one of the things that will stop you from experiencing the grace of God, which is self-imposed curse. A self-imposed curse. A self-imposed curse. Now, yesterday we scratched the surface of the signs of curses. And we said, if you are under a curse, you go to, you find yourself in different directions from where you want to go. If you are under a curse, you experience barrenness, the inability to conceive and reproduce. If you are under a curse, it can affect your job. It can affect your business. It can, you have lack of progress. You have the inability to win souls. If you are under a curse, you miscarry. You have repeated female problems. You suffer humiliation, 
mental or chronic diseases or hereditary medical situations. If you are under a curse, you experience breakdown of family relationships. If you are under a curse, poverty and defeat is your portion. People who are, people who are always almost breaking through but something goes wrong might be under a curse. Students who pass every exam and fail the finals might be under a curse. Rising and falling might be under a curse. Starting a project and a problem arising, you not being able to finish might be a curse. Working hard but having nothing to show for it might be a curse. Regular tragedies and repeated ones might be a curse. Accidents and on, that happen unusually on particular days or months of the year but might also be a curse. When your efforts and total inputs bring no results, you might be under a curse. When things that happen to you have no natural explanation, you might be under a curse. When you are having mysterious experiences in your life, you might also be under a curse. When you are retrogressing, instead of progressing in life, you might also be under a curse. When those who are inferior to you are being made superiors to you, you, are, you might be under a curse. When those who are supposed to be winners keep failing regularly, you might be under a curse. When you are controlled by powers contrary to your will, you might also be under a curse. When you are a brilliant student and suddenly you become dull, you, be, you might be under a curse. When an obedient child suddenly becomes stubborn, the family might be under a curse. When a rich person suddenly becomes poor, after doing all he knows to do, you might be a, under a curse. When problems begin to multiply, when you are confronted with periodic problems, when a particular dead person continues to chase you in your dreams, you might be under a curse. When strange dreams always precede the beginning of certain problems, you might be under a curse. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible says, Whilst the earth remains, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. When we talk about a self-imposed curse, it's a curse that came upon you by the seeds you sow, by what you did. And there are many believers and many pastors who have sown bad seeds. And because of those seeds, they seem to be under a curse. Whatever they touch is not going forward. Scripture abounds with people who sowed a bad seed. And what happened? The Jewish people, for instance, they said crucify jesus and they said this in matthew chapter 27 verse 25 they answered and said let his blood be upon us and upon all our children they said the blood of jesus they should crucify jesus and let his blood come upon them they reap that harvest they reap that harvest everything we do in life is a seed which would definitely bring up a harvest because as the earth remains seed time and harvest shall never pass away give the lord an amen years later after they said this the curse they had spoken in matthew came upon the israelites when the roman emperor titus devastated the jews by killing them and even slitting pregnant women open in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8, the Bible says, Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Whatever you do, the same, whatever seed you sow, the same you will receive, whether you are bond or free. Once I prayed Sunday morning, I was praying for this meeting. God began to share some things with me. I remember in 2006, I was invited by Bishop Wedeko. Now, listen to me. I was, I was privileged in 1986 to speak for Bishop Wedeko and, and Bishop Wedeko ordained me an apostle back to Ghana. 
Amen? <laughs> so I have a very good relationship with Bishop Oyeko. Amen. But at that time, I hadn't been to Shiloh before. I hadn't been to Covenant Land before. And I was in my room praying. And whilst I prayed, God began to give me people by their names. He began to give me the, where, they, where they are coming from. The towns they were coming from. Where they will be sitting in the meeting. God began to show me people and the things that were ailing them. Whilst I prayed on Sunday morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, there is somebody who went to a saloon. And I mentioned it in passing yesterday, but it was also specific for somebody. There was somebody who went to a saloon and your hair has started falling off. Will you please stand, put your hand on your head, let me pray for you. You went to a saloon and your hair has started falling off. You went to a saloon. Quickly stand, let me minister to you right now. You went to a saloon and lift up one hand, let me see you. You went to a saloon and your hair has started falling off. If, yes, lift up your hand, let me see you. Yes, Heavenly Father, I ask that the spirit of boldness will be lifted in the name of Jesus thank you lord for answered prayer we give you praise we give you praise hallelujah and there is a gentleman just like happened to me you went to a barber and after going to the barber you develop keloids that growth that comes behind the head here and you came in here believing god to touch you will you stand put your hand there let me pray for you right now stand put your hand there lift up one hand yes stand okay father in the name of jesus you reveal to redeem, I ask your miracle working power. I pray and I cast this to die at the roots in the name of Jesus. There is a man here. The Lord said to me, you had a fleet of cars. There is this employee that came to work for you and suddenly all your cars, you, you, you don't even know where they have passed. Will you stand, lift up one hand, put the other hand on your chest, let me pray for you. Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask your touch by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I call it done. We give you praise. There is this man you, 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 and your family. You took this domestic help. From the day this domestic help came into your house, you, you and the family, you are suffering one sickness upon the other. Will you stand lift up one hand put the other hand on your forehead let me pray for you right now you took this domestic help yes heavenly father thank you for your spirit of healing and deliverance by the power of the holy ghost in jesus name amen there is this pastor you are a pastor but piles or hemorrhage is killing you you are dying slowly by piles or hemorrhage Will you please stand, lift up one hand, put the other hand on your forehead, let me pray for you. We call it piles, yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for your touch. I ask that you set your people free in the name of Jesus. There is a senior pastor here. You are a senior pastor. Some of your junior pastors did things against you. You got so bitter. Now, you are beginning to develop a kidney problem. And God wants to heal you from that kidney problem. Will you stand, lift up one hand, let me pray for you. You are a senior pastor. Quickly. Yes. Lord, I ask your healing power. Satan, break loose your hold over God's property. Loose him, let him go free in the name of Jesus. And I speak a new kidney for your son. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I call it done. Give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. There is this. You are a senior pastor. Some pastors that you raised betrayed you. And when they betrayed you, they have said all kinds of things about you. It has caused you to have ulcers. Ulcers. Now, any food that goes into your tummy, something begins to happen to you. Stand, put your hand on your belly. Let me pray for you right now. Yes, stand. Yes. Put one hand on the belly, lift up the other hand so that I can see you. Yes, Lord, I ask that your healing power will flow through this body right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer.
the, the, there is this pastor. You left another pastor. And when you left the pastor, the Lord is saying to me that your children are so bitter, they don't want to even serve God anymore. Your children are so bitter with the way the separation went, they don't want to serve God. Stand, let me pray with you quickly. Lift up one hand. Lord, thank you. We call those children back home. In the name of Jesus, we ask that the spirit of salvation will visit them in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. There is a pastor here. The Lord said to me, you lost your church in the north. And your child is bitter. Your child is bitter. And your child does not want to do anything or does not want to have anything to do with God anymore. Will you stand? Let me pray for you. You used to pastor in the north. You lost your church in the north. And now your child does not want to serve God anymore. Stand, lift up one hand, let me see you, let me minister to you because there is a spirit of grace. Heavenly Father, I ask your visitation. I pray that this home shall be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. There is this pastor, you have experienced this three times. You have experienced this three times. Your church grows, it gets to 500, and when it gets to 500, you experience a betrayal, and your church comes back to zero, or comes back to class one. Will you please stand? Let me pray for you right now. That's a path. Yes, will you please stand? Will you lift up one hand, put the other hand on your forehead? Yes, Heavenly Father, thank you for your touch. Thank you for visiting your people. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I call it done amen if you are clapping do it well to the lord give it give it to him give it to him you start up planting churches and three times you have, you planted churches and three times those churches have been taken away from you you don't want to have anything to do with branches anymore stand let me minister to you right now Stand, let me minister to you right now. Yes, lift up one hand, put the other hand on your head. Heavenly Father, thank you for healing the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answered prayer. Amen. There is this pastor, you used to work with somebody, and you hurt that senior pastor, and he cursed you. Now you don't even have an erection. Stand, let me pray for you. From today, you will have an erection. And don't... <laughs> yes. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will do what only you can do in this body. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that there will be a season of restoration in these lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is, there is a pastor here. You took a church that you did it, A church that you are not the founder of. And after taking the church, everything you have is destroyed. You cannot sleep. Something keeps chasing you in your dream. Stand, let me pray for you. But from this meeting, go see your senior pastor and let there be reconciliation. Will you stand? Let me pray for you. That pastor, you took a church that, you, that didn't belong to you. And from that time, things have gone haywire for you. Stand, lift up one hand, lay the other hand on your forehead. Let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Is the person standing? Stand, let me pray for you. Okay. Oh, okay, already the Western. Father, thank you for your thank you for your healing thank you for your transformation thank you for your restoration i give you praise i give i celebrate you for the lives of your people in the name of jesus amen there is this gent yes if you are clapping please do it well there is this gentleman you took over a church you took a church that does not belong to you and from that day, the spirit of lust has been following you. And today we want to break the spirit of lust from your life. Stand, lift up one hand, put your hand on your forehead because you want to be set free. Yes, stand, 
lift up one hand put the other hand on your forehead and ushers if they stand let me know and let me pray quickly okay heavenly father thank you for your delivering power i take authority over every spirit of lust satan break loose your hold over god's property loose them let them go free in jesus name if you are clapping do it well You fought with your pastor. You left him. And you didn't live well. Now, you have developed a hernia. And God is going to heal you right now. Stand, lift up one hand, let me pray for you. Stand, lift up one hand, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast this hernia to die at the roots. Satan, break loose your hold over God's property. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Now, I was talking about self-imposed curses. So there are curses you bring upon you by the way you behave to your pastor. Now, there is somebody here, the Lord is saying to me, a pastor broke away you followed the pastor and when you follow the pastor everything in your life is falling apart you follow that pastor into judgment stand lift up your two hands let me pray for you you didn't break away but the pastor broke away and you followed the pastor stand lift up your two hands quickly let me pray for you stand let me pray for you Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask, Lord, that there will be correction for this family in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I call it done. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. You can do it better than that. Beloved, there are people who don't progress in life because of the seeds they have sown. When you repay evil to people who show you much kindness, evil will never depart from your house. In Proverbs 17 verse 13, the Bible says, Whoso rewarded evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. If people show you kindness, don't repay them with evil. If you repay people with evil, evil will never... Listen to me, beloved. When you repay people with evil, what, what happens is that immediately you have activated the curse, a self-imposed curse upon yourself. You have brought it upon yourself. You might be a believer. You might be saved, but you have activated a self-imposed curse upon yourself because everyone will harvest what he has sown. Everyone will harvest what he has sown. And it is very important to understand there are, and there are so many pastors here and, and many business people here. There are times we work with people and we don't cut them a slack. We don't give them space. We don't allow them. When they make a mistake, we kill them. We destroy them. When they do something wrong, we finish them. We all know how King Saul was chasing David. And David had the opportunity to kill King Saul. But when David had the opportunity to kill King Saul, and they even cut the, the hem of Saul's garment, the Bible says David had smote him. There are people who work with other people, and they will allow others to say negative things to them about the people some even will take the person they are working with they will lambast him they will kill him with their words they will use their words and finish him one of the challenges we have faced in africa is the spirit of rebellion dr serulu always says that as goes the natural so goes the spiritual all truths are parallel and if you are in nigeria now you understand what i'm talking about Nigeria and Ghana, we've experienced many coups like never before. In fact, the first coup that happened in Ghana, the people that did the coup, they were the man, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, inspected the guard from when he was traveling to Hanoi. They were the soldiers who were there when he inspected the guard. And he went 
and they overthrew him we see it in churches we see it in businesses people do things to their leaders we see it even in Noah's life when his own son saw his father exposed instead of covering his father he decided to go and kill his father Ham forgot that if it hadn't been Noah his life would not have been preserved and there are many young pastors or many junior pastors there are many staff members who forget that if it hadn't been the man who started the business if it hadn't been your pastor who started the church you wouldn't even have had space to be part of what is happening and so if your pastor even does something you don't like to you give him some grace give him some space there are past there are many young ministers who have done things against their senior pastor and their senior pastor will overlook it and forgive them but when the senior pastor does it the junior pastor will not forgive him he will not forget forget about it the same thing with businessmen and women beloved when you do that what you are doing is you are bringing a self-imposed curse upon your life when you do that you can't walk in the exceeding abundant grace of god if you are here with me give the lord an amen Noah's own son he forgot in Galatians chapter 6 verse 5 Galatians chapter 6 verse 5 he says for every man shall bear his own burden every man let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches it be not deceived God is not mocked for what a man sows so shall he reap what you sow what you sow if you sow love you will reap love if you sow forgiveness for your leader you will also reap forgiveness everyone will carry his own burden the bible goes on to say that as long as we have the opportunity we should good, do good unto all people especially christians we should good, do good to them if you are not going to come under the curse a self-imposed curse According to Jeremiah 32 verse 19, he says, Great in counsel, mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God will give you according to what you have done. If you did good to your senior pastor, God will do the same thing to you. You know, the truth of the matter is there are many senior pastors who have been so hurt. And most of the people who hate the senior pastor are the gifted people a lot of the times the people who hate the senior pastor and get my book hunting savage wolves in the the apostle paul talks about how as he goes as he leaves the efficient church savage wolves will rise up from the church and he said there will be some that will come from outside and most of the time those who develop a, a wolf spirit most of the time they are leaders you know it wasn't the other angels who led the rebellion against god it was lucifer most of the time it is those who are associate pastors those who are praise and worship leaders intercessors or leaders of ushers those who are gifted it is normally those who are gifted that the devil tempts to bring a self-imposed curse upon themselves listen to me if god has connected you to somebody and god has not asked you to leave please don't leave amen if you are clapping do it well we have we have too many we have too many pastors who are leaving flourishing churches They'll leave a flourishing church and go and start something. Should Jesus tarry, I shall not be disappointed ministries. And for 10 years, they are having 15 people. 10 years. Our, one of our presidents used to say, it is better to belong to a political party that is going somewhere than to be the head of a political party that doesn't win any seat in parliament. It, if you are clapping, do it well. <laughs> It is better to belong to something like this if you belong to dunamis why do you want to go and start something else because already dunamis has goodwill 
when you go to a town and you say that I'm a pastor of Dr. NHL, that one alone is a beginning credit. Amen? It's a beginning credit. Because he has fought your battles for you. He has been criticized. He has been lambasted. They have insulted him. They have hurt him. And all you do is you are walking into the harvest. So there are times it is not necessary. It is not necessary. I mean, we, 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 we were introduced to Bishop Abioye yesterday. He served Bishop Oedekwa from the beginning. Bishop Abioye, from the last I heard, is passing a church of over 30,000 people. And he's an associate pastor. And there are, there are general overseers and presiding bishops, 15 years, their members is 12. Oh, they have 12 members. And out of the 12, 10 of them are elders, deacons, deaconesses. You know, and, 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 and at times, what makes it difficult? What makes it difficult when people leave a church? If they are a pastor or if they are a leader, what makes it difficult if they leave a church? My people have a proverb. They say that if the frog comes out of the water and tells you that the crocodile has a big mouth, you don't argue. And so what, they, what happens is that they meet people and the people say, was there anything wrong? They say no. And the way they said that no, the people know that there was something. Meanwhile, there was nothing. And when you do that, what you do is you bring a self-imposed curse upon yourself. If nobody offended you and you want to go, please go in peace. And leave those who want to stay, to stay. Give the Lord praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. You know, there are times... People want to leave a church and they want to break, they, they, they want to destroy the church that has blessed them. They want to take some of the people from the church that has blessed them to go and start their own. It is like you wanting to build a house and you go to your father's house, you remove the roof of your father's house so that the rain will beat him, the sun will, will, will beat him to come and build your house. And that is what so many pastors and so many business people are doing they want to get into business they look at their boss's customers and they go to win their boss's customers to follow them you are bringing a self-imposed curse upon yourself if you are here with me give me an amen i know many pastors who were anointed but because they didn't live well And listen to me for some of you who will who will do ministry with this church and some of you who came from other churches and you do ministry I always wonder a pastor works in a ministry for 20 years and then now he's going to be 60 years he's 55 and then he comes to tell you can you release me and let me go and start something what is wrong with you is that you are suffering andropos you are suffering from andropos and so you think that you can do what you could do when you were young listen in your 20s and your 30s there is a certain kind of fasting there is a certain kind of prayer you can pray in your 50s you can't pray that kind of prayer anymore oh you didn't hear me and so that is not the time when you make those mistakes there are many people making silly mistakes and they are bringing self-imposed curses upon themselves may that be far from you Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. The first line. Some believe is talking about spiritual parents. And the second line is talking about biological parents. It says honor them because they contributed to bring you into the world. Honor them. So never get to a place where you despise your father or your parents. Don't, don't ever despise them. Do not dishonor your mother. Do not dishonor your parents-in-law, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law. There's a movie they acted, they called the mother-in-law monster-in-law. 
So many women go to marry and they think their mother-in-law is a monster-in-law. Don't forget one day you are also going to be a mother-in-law. And if you maltreat your mother-in-law, you will reap that harvest. You will bring a self-imposed curse upon yourself. In Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20, Proverbs 20 verse 20, the Bible says, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You can't shine. You can insult your parents, whether spiritual or whether natural. You can insult your spiritual father. You can insult your pastor. You can despise your pastor. You can despise. When you do that, you can't sign. There are many people, they are struggling. They are putting in all the effort. They are working hard, but they are not shining. From today, may you have the grace to shine. Oh, give them praise. Give them thanks. Give them praise. May you be able to shine. Listen. After this meeting, if you were working with somebody and you left the person and your separation was not done well, you hurt the person or you disrespected the person, go and reconcile. Go and reconcile. It is very important. Go and reconcile. I remember there's this pastor in Worry. When he was celebrating his 20th anniversary, there were these sons who came to him. And some of them had left him. And when they were leaving, they took some of the church, etc. And they went, and the majority, of, the majority of them had suffered all kinds of things. And when they came, the pastor's wife was telling them how because of the, the decision they took and how they did it, the pastor has suffered heart problems. Because of that, he had suffered all kinds of things in his life a bishop told me a story of this senior pastor who visited him in his office and whilst they were chatting the, the senior pastor's back was towards the door and then somebody opened the door and the senior pastor I mean he was frightened and the man asked him why are you frightened he said because my people my, my other pastors they've so backstabbed me that when I sit I have to face the door if I'm not facing the door so there are many senior pastors who have died before their time. Because there were people who got called to help them and those people instead have hurt them. May you be a help. Oh, uh, I said may you be a help. In Proverbs chapter 30 verse 17, the Bible says, The eye that mocks at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. <laughs> This is a figurative speech, meaning you will lose direction. You will lose direction. You will lose direction. You will become blinded. You will be spiritually bl blinded. <laughs> May that be far from you. Amen. A lot of people sit in church and they don't have breakthroughs because they take their pastors for granted. You know, most of the time, for many churches, Except a church that values the pastor very well. For many churches, the pastor cannot have miracles in his church. Thank God for dunamis. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Every Tuesday, Dr. Paul is having a miracle service here. Every Tuesday. Because for a, a lot of people, they, they are more comfortable with outsiders. But an outsider is just passing through. An outsider is just passing through. I'm just passing through. Amen. Dr. Paul is your pastor. Give God praise. Give God praise. Listen. No matter how a visiting speaker comes. If a visiting speaker comes and raises the dead. Don't forget your pastor. Tell somebody don't forget your pastor. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Many pastors can do great things in their church because the people are familiar with them. There's a spirit of familiarity. When he says Mark chapter 11, they know he's going to quote verse 24. When he says Matthew chapter 6, they know he's going to say verse 33. They are so used to him. Yes, he might be quoting 
Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but the anointing on him has increased the wisdom in his life has increased if you had him yesterday and he even said Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 and you are hearing him today there is a new anointing that has come upon him he might have received new insight and revelation and so listen give the Lord praise give him praise So don't talk against your pastor. Don't talk against your boss. Don't talk against the people God gives ahead of you. Don't persecute the people of God. Don't persecute them. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I'm jumping some things because... <laughs> Wow. You see, when you become a Christian, if you don't consciously break self-imposed curses, they will follow you. Amen? In the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us that there is a book of records. There is a book of records. And whatever good or bad thing you have done is written in it. Therefore, you'll be made to harvest what you have sown. So be careful what you sow. And don't attempt to curse someone that God has not cursed. I've seen junior pastors curse their pastor. It doesn't work like that. You can't curse your pastor. <laughs> Amen? Oh, you didn't hear me. I said you can't curse your pastor. <laughs> Tell somebody you can't curse your pastor. And so if you are a pastor and you have to leave, live peacefully. When you look at all the people who fought the leaders of God, like Korah, Datan, and Abiram, they were all leaders in the church. Like Miriam, she was a leader in the church. Every one of the people who fought any of the leaders in the Bible, they were all leaders in the church. And listen to me, beloved. If you have to leave a church, leave it in peace. I know some pastors who have left the church and because they left the church, because for many of the young children in the church, the senior pastor is their angel. When they see the senior pastor, they think they, I mean, that is the representation of an angel they have. And then you leave the church. Now when you leave the church, you have to give reasons why you have left the church to your children. If you have these inquisitive children who we have now you have to give them a reason and as you give them the reasons you have to pull down your pastor and when you pull down your pastor you get lower than he is you go lower than your pastor is and so before you realize those children don't want to have anything to do with God again because you destroyed the church to them and once you destroy the church to your children the, the children don't have confidence in going to church again so if you are a Christian don't even insinuate or talk falsely against your pastor to your children don't do that don't do that if you are in somebody's church and you are building your own to take church members I know a pastor who was in a church and whilst he pastored that church he, they were in a building project he was building another church building so that immediately he finished this one he will go please for some of you who are pastors let's make this thing work give God praise give God praise give him praise if you break up somebody's marriage it will happen to you if you sleep with somebody's wife you will always have challenges when you see somebody in trouble don't rejoice don't work toward the collapse of other people don't work toward the collapse of other people strengthen other people when Haman worked towards the collapse of Mordecai he ended up he himself going on that which he has sold listen to me beloved there are self-imposed curses self-imposed curse we bring it upon ourselves 
in the next few minutes that I have left, we are going to pray. And we are going to come against self-imposed curses. We are going to ask God to heal our hearts. We are going to ask God to do new things in our lives. That there will be reconciliation between us. The Lord said to me that before I finish this message, I should ask for pastors who left the church and the way they left, they didn't leave well. And today they want to ask God forgiveness. Will you get up and walk to me in front here quickly? You are a pastor. You left the church. And the way you left it, you didn't leave well. Get up and join me in front here quickly. I'm going to pray for you. Pastors. Pastors. You left the church. You didn't leave well. lift up one hand and say this after me say dear God you are the God of the second chance I submit my spirit my soul unto you and I ask that any case that is following me because of what I did today let your mercy and your grace speak for me Lord Heal the heart of my pastor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Heavenly Father, I commit these dear ones to you. I pray that as a spiritual authority, I break every curse over their lives. I reverse every curse because of their repentance. I pray that, Lord, you will do a new work for your people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I call it done. Amen. Find a way to reconcile with your pastor. Find a way to apologize to your pastor. Find a way. God bless you. Take your seat. The last, the last one I'm going to do, I'm going to ask senior pastors who people left you and you felt so hurt and you can't still get over it some of you it's giving you sicknesses and things quickly get up and come to the front let me pray with you quickly you are a senior pastor you are a boss people left you you can't get over it some of you it's giving you all kinds of strange diseases get up and come i'm gonna pray with you quickly your hand where you are hurting if it's if, 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 if it's a heart problem put your hand there if, it, if it's something that that is making you bitter put your hand on your chest let's pray Heavenly Father I commit these dear ones to you I pray that you heal your sons and daughters I pray that Lord 
This pain will be eased for them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do only what you can do for them. Stretch forth your healing hands and touch them. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Church, will you stand? I have two minutes more. We are going to pray. For any self-imposed curse, anything that will bring a self-imposed curse in your life, lift up one hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask that today, every self-imposed curse over my life, let it break by the power of the Holy Ghost. Any self-imposed curse that came over my life by the things I said, by the things I did, by my wishes in the name of Jesus, Lord, let it break over my life. Open your mouth. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Let it break. 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 Every self-imposed case. Every self-imposed case. Every self-imposed case. Every self-imposed case. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break. In the name of Jesus. Let it break. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break. In the name of Jesus. Let it break. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I commit your people into your hands. I ask that Lord, just like Elisha changed the story of Jericho because he was an authority figure and reversed the curse that had come on Jericho through Joshua. I stand as an authority figure in the body of Christ and I break every curse and every self-imposed curse any curse over the lives of your people and i ask great grace to work in the lives of your people in jesus name give the lord a mighty clap offering